Hello and welcome to the second webinar in the series of uh, two with the topic Reaching the Unreachables in Adult Education. We had the first webinar on the 9th of May with Maurice and if you didn't see it already, the recording is available. Um, the link has been sent out to all registered participants. Uh, that was a presentation of how uh, we can approach the challenges of reaching the unreachables. The LEC project is a shortening abbreviation for Let Europe Know, and it is, pro it is a, a project that aims at providing a curriculum for, how, uh, for, le for teaching adult educators how to better inform everybody in the field of education and outside of education what learning is all about, why adult education matters. In the curriculum we have five modules and one of the modules is specifically aimed at looking at how we can deal with the challenge of reaching those hard to reach uh, groups in society, those who usually are the weakest, uh, the most outside and those who are also in most need of adult education. The last webinar was a presentation of approaches and this is a follow-up webinar which is very much aimed at being a discussion where reflections and input and thoughts of you in the group here today are most valuable. So Maurice, I will give you the floor in a moment and you will have a short follow-up uh, presentation and then a lot of the time in this webinar will be used and spent on um, discussing this issue together you and Morris. You will be you have been given audio rights so when you wish to speak using your microphone you need to activate your microphone. Uh, this webinar is being recorded so what you're saying will also will also end up on the recording for those who could not participate today we were about 25 uh, 27 people at the last webinar but many said they couldn't attend today because it's a holiday week or they were traveling and so on and they have asked for a recording also everything you write in the chat window which will be open for the whole duration of the webinar will end up in the recording just so that you know now Maurice I give the floor to you and move over to the presentation mode yes really good so good morning everyone, it's very nice that you can be here and that we can share some ideas concerning reaching the unreachables in your own daily practice and in your own work of adult education. Um, and what we're trying to do now um, is just, I, I sum up what we discussed the last um, a webinar at the 9th of May and it will be very short and then I'll try to give the floor to you also and try to discuss what um, possibilities there are for your own practice and uh, to optimize your own practice in, in reaching the unreachables. And that's why I have to ask uh, you some questions concerning um, a step model we developed, a four step model we developed in our university in uh, cooperation with um, institutions of adult education. What um, we pre what I presented last um, the 9th of May is that there are various that our target group is so um, uh, based on a variety of participants so that you can't say this is our target group so it's very difficult sometimes to reach the people who we want to reach for the course of education for example this was Mary from England I told you last time. Um, she's an employee in childcare, 30 years old, and she has a difficulty in reporting to parents what happened with their children during the time when they are at the childcare uh, institution. But also, I told you that we have from Hungary Tim, who is homeless, um, unemployed, and who have low literacy skills. So he has to face some totally different uh, problems, but he has the same need in joining adult education courses in an informal or non-formal way. So here we have two different persons who are in their own opinion and maybe in the opinion of their surroundings 
uh, vulnerable and who can possibly attend a course of adult education, but it has to be tailored made in order to give them a possibility um, to get more social inclusion due to the fact that what I told you already in the beginning of May that still a quarter of the European citizens are at risk of poverty um, and there is a gap of the quality of life between the low and the high skilled and therefore the European Commission wants to activate more people and to lift them up into a state of social inclusion and to decrease their poverty rates so and that's about people who are illiterate um, the 15 years old who have um, lower skills um, when they are 25, the migrants and also older people, for example. And this was the concept of social inclusion we discussed. Social inclusion is a process in which citizens try to cope and control their resources and services, have and connect to social relationships and feel included in the local area, take part in its activities. So you can see that if one joins a course of adult education, it's not only that their technical skill, for example, their reading skill or their skills for writing will improve or will be improved, but also that they get a better place in society. And especially what I also mentioned, part number three, that they feel included in the local area and that the social state of social exclusion will decrease. And therefore, I explained this model, and this is the last part of the introduction, um, that um, if you look to the European syst system of adult education, then most of the time we focus on increasing numeracy or language skills, um, and it's in language as a second language, but also your native language should be um, improved. But we should discuss the possibility to connect that language which we want to uh, speak to um, how we can use the language. So, for example, the financial language, you have to uh, manage your own uh, financial stuff. Or the digital language, you have to try to be on the internet and to communicate with others, for example, via Facebook. The daily language, you have to connect to your neighbors, etc or your friends and also the family language it would be nice if you have the possibility to read your children or your grandchildren and what is more difficult sometimes is the healthy language how can you have a better conversation with the doctor or how can you read your medicines and also the working language if you have a job how can you increase your possibility to get um, better skills at work and if you look to the now the 21st century skills what is launched by the European Commission, for example, and the diversity of organizations in Europe, is it very important that we try to increase the employability of these vulnerable adults. And if we want to do that, then they have to increase also their language skills. Okay. And now I'm going to, um, first of all, the question is for you. Are there some more questions concerning what I repeat now? And what we discussed in the beginning of May. Was everything clear or does a new question occur? Please, I'll give you a few minutes to type that in the chat room. And if there are no, if there are no specific questions, then it's also good. And we go to the contents which I asked to you. Okay, I see no questions to occur. So then I want to ask you the following thing. I ask you that we developed in cooperation with institutions of adult education a four-step model. How to know what the adult learners need to learn. So we try to specify the daily life environment of the learners. And since we did that, we saw that more and more people um, could attain courses. For example, that the language part uh, the possibility to learn your language was connected to a more um, important problem for them concerning health, concerning work, concerning family, or concerning the financial matters, or the digital language, or the daily language they have to speak. I want you to ask what, which of these six um, fields in life are most important in the courses you organize or in the practices you organize for potential learners. 
it would be nice if you can type that in the screen or if you have the possibility to um, discuss that via the microphone. Who wants to start? Switch to the full screen. We can see the chat. Do you all have the possibility to speak to the microphone? Okay, I'm hearing it my own. The possible uh, difficulty in hearing everything. And the others, is it for them possible to follow it? Maybe I can type it, maybe that's better. So please try to give an answer. You can see that Linute is typing, so I wait for the answer to appear. Okay. Linute, is it possible for you to speak to the microphone? Then I have a next question. So how is it possible in your country to recruit learners for digital courses? It's for Astrid. I have a question. Is it possible to recruit learners for digital courses and then for Linuta? Is it possible to recruit learners for working in with I'll wait for the answers and then I'll give you what we did in our countries, the answer.
Okay. What we try to do in our countries, or in, uh, for example, in uh, the Netherlands, but also in Belgium, is that we um, we try to cooperate with um, digital devices organizations, organizations um, which we try to connect to the center of adult education, and in cooperation with them, um, we start up a new courses. And these are courses concerning blended learning. If you want to know um, how we do that, I can give you a study which are the most important uh, um, framework you can use for starting up digital courses. Um, that's one. And in, we found out that um, to cooperate with the organizations who can start up digital devices and digital social networks, we could and broaden the network of low skilled people and illiterate people following courses up to more than I think probably 10,000 or 15,000 especially when it's focused on one target group. For example we have Senior Web in the Netherlands and that's an organization who's totally focusing on all the people and try to um, begin with the importance of social networking and with the importance of connecting to other people and the accessibility of that. When the digital device organization helps these people to start up and join a digital network, then we could trace them and we could um, um, direct them to courses of adult education. So the cooperation with these organizations is very important. So that's the possibility to start a blended learning. If we, if we also cooperate with oefenen.nl, that means how to exercise, and with them, we found out that we reached um, two more than up to 200,000 learners due to the fact that they developed a very easy system to learn the language at your own in combination with courses of adult education. If it's interesting for you, I can um, give you the link to the website so that you have an example how you can start up by yourself for these kind of courses. That's concerning the digital courses. And then concerns in the rural, concerning the unemployment people. Then I have a question for Lenuta. Um, you have courses in the rural area for the unemployment people. How do you trace these people and how do you find them? Can you answer that question? So I will repeat it for Lenuta. How do you reach them? And then the new the second question, can you mention the two best success factors of reaching these people? And then what I'm trying to do is I'm try to compare it with um, the sit situation in the Netherlands. How we did that. Waiting for the answer. Okay, work with the local administration often, so therefore it worked, and you could find these persons. That is very good to do. Um, we try to do that in the Netherlands too, and uh, for example, but what we find out that it's very difficult that some communities or some policymakers couldn't trace these people, although it's in their administration system. So what the best thing was to do, there was in the middle of the Netherlands, um, there is a place called Ede, and they had several problems due to the fact that there was a high um, unemployability rate, 
a lot of people didn't have a job um, and they found out that they also had language problems. So what they did is that they connect um, these language courses to the Chamber of Commerce. So in cooperation with the Chamber of Commerce, they started the courses um, and they made a kind of an, a new materials where they learned how to start up your own organization, for example, and how to apply for a job. And in between, they learned also the technical reading skills or the technical writing. So that was the best way um, to find out if people could learn the language better and better and that they couldn't be ashamed of the problem, that they, couldn't, that they weren't able to talk their language in a different or in a public way. So that's what we try to do. So you, could, you can find also another especially private or public organization in the field of work who can cooperate with you and who would have the possibility to start up a kind of an, a hidden language course. Okay, we have a question to all the participants. Can you just type three um, important things of interest for your potential target group? What do they really like? So just type or mention, I will write it down. Mention three interests of your potential This is step A. This is the first step in getting setting up a course. I'm saying learners are motivated by volunteering, related skills, health and well-being, and communication, social media. Okay, great. I'm waiting for the answer of Astrid. Written social communication, Facebook, text, email, it's a growth during education. Third one is a little bit difficult, that's true. Okay, then step B, mention now two needed language skills. Connecting to the interest you mentioned before. Step B is that try now to mention just two needed skills connecting to the interests you mentioned before of the potential learners. Just saying, writing legible sentences, understanding nuances in written text, and that one is the last one is a very difficult one for the low skilled and illiterate people. You see that most of them are able to set up a Facebook page and to communicate by chat and messenger, but you see that sometimes a mistake is there and can, um, uh, yeah, what do you say, can be the cause of um, a, a kind of a d discussion with other people, uh, which you don't want to have. So that's very good. Marion saying communication interaction, technical practical management in an association. Especially the last one is very interesting. We can see that volunteers or people who want to volunteer, that they come to courses concerning the fact that you say 
um, it's necessary for you as a volunteer to have to know about some practical management stuff if you work in an organization. Then step C. Now make a potential title okay, give you a few minutes to step C make a potential title for the course covering these language skills and relating to the interests try to do that and if you make a title for that potential course just try to make the title as short as possible try to make a title for a course which you want to organize covering these things give you a few minutes Social media campaigning for volunteers. That will work, my own, definitely. Maybe you can be, you can say something behind that, um, like getting there in a minute. But if they want, if they can do it very good, um, that they will be connected to the world in a minute. Or, for example, seeing the, the world in a minute. That's, that's a very good title, social media campaigning for volunteers. Astrid. Waiting for your answer. Connecting with your friends and family. That will work out. We saw that one of the most important things um, is that they, it can be in a proper way connected by Facebook and LinkedIn to friends and colleagues. That's really good. Then steps D. Mention. Mention two organizations you can cooperate in organizing this course. Which two possible organizations will be um, the basic provider you can cooperate with in organizing this course and um, also in preventing that it won't be only focused on the language but also on the practical part. So it would be nice if you can give an answer for that. Just a few minutes. A very difficult question, maybe. Find out two stakeholders. <laughs> that can be a difficult question, but there are possible stakeholders in your surroundings. So Marion and Astrid both are really good um, examples, of course your centers and NGOs and volunteer centers, but I think what we found out in our country, which one is the, one of the most important ones, sometimes it's difficult when you're uh, working in a rural area, but these are the housing companies. Um, due to the fact that a lot of low skilled and illiterate learners um, um, work or, or live in social housing for example or and that they are poor for a social network and the housing company have a lot of questions sometimes for them to um, keep the, the, the surroundings clean and to pay um, uh, their rent in time etc etc and for them it's sometimes difficult to connect to these people and they are want to have a kind of um, a possibility that these people can come together once in a while and um, learn to increase their skills also in communicating with their housing companies and sometimes the housing company also has 
potential money for organizing these kind of courses. So we found out that these housing companies we don't often cooperate with are one of the most important companies to cooperate. So that's maybe possible. And that is a little bit comparable maybe with the cultural houses from the villages. These cultural houses are welfare centers which you can use and which you can connect to if you organize one of these courses. Then, the last step, that's step E. Okay. If you organize this course, What do you ask the learners themselves to bring in? Wait. Last question I have, and then I will explain some studies which you can use for this. If you organize this course, what do you ask the learners themselves to bring in? What do you ask them in order to let these courses be successful? What do you want them to hand over to you during the course in order that the course is tailor-made? And then I will explain the last um, part of contents in the last study. And then be, after answering this question, I will explain where you can find the studies. Okay, so and my own, you saying their own volunteering experiences, as most people have already tried it, of course. And do you also discuss what went wrong, or do you think that is not nothing you should discuss during the course? So, do you also discuss their bad experiences or only their positive experiences concerning volunteering? Um, the reason why I ask this is that we often think that um, if we cooperate, if we, we develop courses for low skilled people, that it only has to be positive. But sometimes the reflection mode is very good that you look back to what they what was what went wrong. Now you can use that to increase your daily life for the moment now. So therefore I think it's very good if you use also that. Um, practices sometimes, but do it in, of course, a safe way. I will wait for your answer, my own. Okay. So, on the other hand, you're giving the good example, the positive examples, so that um, they reflect what the positive um, things can be beside the bad experience. Okay, that's very good. So then you can see that also for them it's possible to reach um, a, a goals in a very short time, um, which they wouldn't think in the beginning that they couldn't reach. That's very good. And the reason why I ask this is that we found out in the last studies, and that was um, um, concerning all the people, we found out that co-creation is one of the best things to do. So you develop the course, on the way to in togetherness or in cooperation with the learners themselves. And we did that, for example, for the GUTS project. The GUTS project was a project concerning intergenerational learning. And there we found out that the cooperation between learners and um, teachers was so good that the course itself um, got better and better and better. And then the results increased also. So I think that co-creation is really a good thing to do. 
What now? I want to um, hand over to you. I will do that um, um, after this session is over. Um, I will give you some information about the following studies and I will type it that it's also on the screen. One, a framework for um, success factors for blended learning for low skilled learners. You will get that. We realized the study where we found out which um, uh, parts of the learning environment are really inevitable and should be incorporated to have a success rate which is very high for your adult learners. Second, I will send a link to Oefenen.nl, a Dutch platform with learning programs. We made a comparison with several platforms who cooperate um, um, with digital devices and who start up learning courses for adult learners. And th this one in the Netherlands um, yeah, reached the highest number of low skilled learners, I think about more than 200,000. So, therefore, I give you the link to their platform so that you can look how they develop the prog their programs. And I think there's possibly also some things are in English. And three, I will give you the results of I will give you the results of the GUTS study concerning co-creation, how you can co-create your own course in cooperation with the adult learners themselves. So what we found, what I try to do in this very short session of what I try to do together with you is to make the switch that every course and everything can be learned with the learners and also it's a very difficult uh, thing what learners think they ha are ashamed of, like learning their own language again, that with a kind of a funny thing or a kind with a co-creativeness process you also can um, organize courses for these uh, people who in the first case seem to be enrichable but who are not enrichable and therefore I will send you the studies and the link to the studies um, I mentioned before. I hope that this interactive session gives a little bit more, one step more to, for you to dare to develop courses who are not like the common courses but can um, find a um, connection with the possible adult learners. Then my last question now for you is, are there any more questions that appear or are there any more things you want to know? Please type it in the window and if there are not any more questions, then the answer is no, that's also good. Then please type no in the window, then I know we can try to end it. Okay, Astrid, that's clear, Mayon. Lenuta or Rafaela? And Rafaela? Good. I want to thank you for the time and hopefully this was another step in developing um, and reaching the unreachables and I will send the studies to you and I hope that these studies in combination with we sent earlier before can give you a kind of an inspiration for developing your own course in the upcoming future for reaching the unreachables and for the adult learners. And if there are any questions who, uh, which occur in the upcoming weeks you can um, send an email to me. Johanny, I want to end the session.